press that when you want to talk. Thank you, Roberta, for being here tonight from COG and um, be willing. I guess you had a good tour of the city this afternoon. Yes, to yes. Olivia and Jean. And uh, so um, I guess we'll just let you go right ahead and make your presentation. All right. Well, thank you very much for having me. I'm excited to begin this planning process with you for the community preservation plan. Um, I've worked on a plan in a community very similar to where you are at right now. Um, my own city of Medford um, just is about a year ahead of you in implementing their community preservation and getting it off the ground. So we've just completed our inaugural community preservation plan and are um, in the midst right now of our first funding cycle having received applications. So I am fresh off the press in, in that regard, and I've been a planning consultant for 20 years. Um, so I have worked with communities on issues related to community preservation for quite some time. And I love communities like Holyoke. I love communities that have the diversity and the bones that you have, and um, helping to envision what can be done and how to do it. And Community Preservation Act is a great tool. Um, so I congratulate you on getting, um, getting off the ground with this. So in the handout that I've just given you, um, it's an introduction to the planning process. Oh, let me give you a copy of this handout as well. You're, you're, the, you're the person who we're going to be working with. Yes, yeah. primarily with me. Um, okay, so would you like us to introduce ourselves? So yes, you know uh, that's a great place to start. Thank you. <laughs> All right. That's so, Ryan. I don't know if you, I guess you can. Ryan? That's Ryan up there, our administrative assistant. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Kip Foley, and I was appointed by the uh, city council. I'm not a city council person, but I was appointed by them. You're at large appointment, yeah. I'm Marco Crescentini. I was appointed by the Holyoke Historical Commission. Okay. Andrew McMahon. I'm a city at large city council appointee. <coughs> uh, <coughs> Mike Falsetti. I'm representing the housing. Thank you. Someone else may be joining us. I think Libby is uh, going to be here. Libby Hernandez. She's from Parks and she's appointed from Parks and Rec. Okay. Libby. And then um, there is um, what's the new new person Conklin. from Conklin. Conkle, uh, from Rosemary. Rosemary. Mary, Rosemary. <coughs> she, uh, she had a meeting, but she should be here eventually. So. So you more people. Okay. So I'm trying to count how many. Do you have a full <laughs> nine? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, thank you. And um, may I ask before we um, get started, 
did how, did some of you have a role in helping to get CPA um, passed in Holyoke? Um, yeah. yeah, I think Rosemary did too. I think Rose, Rosemary uh, was actually of the <coughs> campaign of, of getting it together and getting it off the ground. Yeah, she put people. Okay, yeah. And um, I guess that's, that's the questions that I have. So you have three at-large members and city council representative um, and then the five requisite members. Right. Okay. Um, so I wanted to walk through the um, kind of an introduction to what the CPA plan entails. I've given you a handout that shows um, what the objectives are that I see, and I'd love to get your feedback on whether you um, share uh, um, the, this idea of what the objectives are for the CPA plan. First of all, it's to provide your committee with a rational basis for being able to make recommendations in the future. And that rational basis is going to be based on an understanding of what your existing conditions and assets and needs are and also using stakeholder input from um, people who are have an interest directly in CPA fundable activities and, and the general public um, to um, use that stakeholder input to prioritize and develop goals that you can follow. Um, Secondly, is to assist the city in coordinating CPA funds with priorities and initiatives through various city departments that intersect with CPA program areas, as well as your nonprofit or your community partners, um, so that people are working together um, and using CPA in the way that best um, advances your mutual goals. Um, so we do this through building on prior planning. So I'm going to be looking at planning that's already occurred around the city, um, planning that's in the pipeline right now, talk to the planners and have an understanding of how the plans work together, <coughs> um, to consult with boards, committees, staff, and community partners, um, and to try to um, use their input to identify the kinds of projects that CPA can support. There's a lot of questions that people will have along the way of, can we do this? Can we do this? And sometimes the answers are surprising. So um, we'll try to sort out some of those um, questions along the way. Um, establishing a process and a timeline to guide the first year's application process. So I have some questions for you after we have this introduction of where you are in thinking about what your, your timeline looks like in particular. Um, and finally, transparency. Having this community preservation plan provides clear information about the CPA, about your committee, the application process, the evaluation criteria, you know, it, it um, helps people to know exactly what's going on so that it will help to sustain the support for CPA going on, going forward. Um, and this, this is done through broad communication, and I'll talk with you a little bit more uh, in detail about what um, what the communication strategy will be throughout the planning process and through the documents that we prepare, the draft final and final documents, collecting public input and making those available on a broad basis for people to um, be able to review and access. So that's, um, that's the planning process. Any comments on, on what, what you would like to see come about as a result of this? pretty much covered everything um, that, you know, at this point in time that we're, we're all new to this. So, yeah. You know, we probably will have questions as time goes on, but right now, yes, Mike. Oh, uh, Roberta, are you, are you going to have an office at City Hall or uh, I, somewhere? I will not. Actually, I'm working from Eastern Mass, so working remotely. My intention is to um, meet with people in a few meeting, like a few days that I can spend throughout the planning process, and um, to um, be available by phone and email uh, as 
much as needed and to do the research and writing um, from my office in Eastern Mass. Okay. Um, are you, when you meet with people, where, where would you meet them, for example? That will depend on um, if they're, you know, it will depend on who I'm meeting with and what their availability is. So if I come out here to Holyoke, I can meet here in City Hall if, if space is given for that. I can meet in the offices of people, of stakeholders who we're meeting with. Um, so I'd like to actually get into a little bit further what kind of meetings we'll be having with stakeholders, and then we can figure out logistically where it works best. Later too, but I would assume that by stakeholders, we're also including the various grassroots groups who worked very hard to get this process underway. I know we have a representative of one of them in the audience tonight, um, Vitek Krupta from Gateway City Arts, and you know I'm sure all of those folks, although they won't be identified as city stakeholders, you know they are in fact stakeholders, and you know, I just wanted to be sure that there's some process for bringing them in too. Yes, we will definitely be getting to that um, in in a moment. Um, I'm I'm going to be asking you to provide me with feedback on the list that I've begun to gather of stakeholders. Um, so let me first talk about the overall timeline for this process. For the plan itself, the timeline is um, over the months of February and March. I'm going to be doing um, background analysis and stakeholder outreach. So the background analysis is going to be looking at all the planning that currently exists um, and looking at socio-economic demographic data to develop a snapshot of you know what the existing conditions are today and the stakeholder outreach I'm going to talk with you further about how we go about the stakeholder outreach um, that's going to entail consult uh, interviews my giving interviews and focus groups with stakeholders and following up with um, in, with phone interviews where we're not able to meet with people in person. And also, it can be important to, for um, the members of your committee to also be a part of this outreach process because the two goals of outreach are that, first of all, I get information that helps me understand what the needs and opportunities are that I can put into the plan and the priorities. And secondly, to build relationships with your community partners and the boards and committees and city departments who are going to be your applicants and the people who you need to work with to implement CPA projects going forward. So that relationship building is most effectively something that, that you can work on. So we can talk a little bit more about how um, we can each take a part in reaching out to stakeholders. And so I intend to provide a preliminary report that essentially entails the first half of the plan by the end of March. And then we're going to move into a broader public outreach phase. One obvious um, element of the public outreach phase is going to be a public forum that will take place sometime probably in mid-April. And we can also talk about what are some other ways that would be effective to reach people in your community. Um, I have commonly used surveys in the past, um, both print and online. And so I could get feedback from you about whether you see a survey as being a good tool, whether you'd like to do some other, you know, attending community events and going out and talking to people um, is another way of um, reaching the public so um, I'd like to talk some more down the road about you know what are effective ways that that we can um, get collect public input and so that occurs over April and early May and I'm going to be working through the month of May to put to um, of, to take in all of the information that we've heard and develop the second half, the, the goals and priorities um, half of the community preservation plan. 
um, so that the beginning of June we have a full draft and can circulate that for comments and have it completed by the end of June. Hi, let me introduce, good. I'm Roberta Cameron, nice to meet you. Um, all right, so that's the overall timeline. I'm going to be getting into some more detail about how each of these elements works, but do you have any questions about the timeline? Good. All right, thank you. Busy. We'll be busy. Yes, we will. This is a, a it's doable, Yes. but it is so. a, a, you know, we've got to get right on it and, and carry out all of these steps um, to complete this by the end of June. So then I provided a list of what the prior plans are, and I'm in communication with some of your city staff to ensure that I have um, all the plans that I should be aware of. And if there's any, particularly if there are community partners who have plans that I should be aware of, um, please let me know um, if there's anything missing from this list. Then on the next page, or the other side, depending which copy you have. Um, I have a list of, of the stakeholders. So you asked about whether we're going to be including um, community partners outside of just the city, and yes. Um, again, I've met with a few people today who've already given me some additions to the list of, of community partners, um, and I would love to hear more if there's anyone missing. Not on the list um, is Nuestras Raices, Tapestry Health, Holyoke Gas and Electric, the Water Department, One Holyoke CDC, Trustees of Reservations, the DPW and the City Solicitor. So um, again, you know, if, if there's anyone who you'd like to see us reach out to, please let me know. And anyone who you can reach out to, please um, feel free to do this. Um, I wanted to actually pass out a second um, handout, which is, um, I'll first introduce it. So in, in, for, the, for committee members, to, um, for us to, to talk with all of these stakeholders is, as I said, I mean, um, it's more effective if we can work together in reaching some of the stakeholders. So I would invite you, um, to the extent that, that some of you are available and feel comfortable with it, to um, approach some of the stakeholders yourselves, particularly boards and committees of the city. Um, that's an area where it's harder for me to come to their regularly scheduled meetings, but you may be able to put yourself on the agenda of their meetings, introduce the Community Preservation Committee to them, introduce the process, and collect any input that, that, you, that they'd like to share with you about what they see the needs and opportunities are. And I've prepared um, a kind of a how-to set of talking points that you can take with you to those committees and then instructions for how you can report back to me. So I'll leave that with you. There is a, one um, blank on the, um, the material that I provided for that, and that is that I would like to know, um, be able to share with them if you have a picture of what your timeline is for your um, next steps beyond preparing the community preservation plan. Has your committee yet developed a um, a timeline for you, for opening and wrapping up your first application round? You have not. Okay. It would be helpful maybe after I kind of get through this presentation. Maybe that's the first place to start um, is establishing. Yes. By that, by that mean, you're, you're defining that as the that part of the story where we're accepting applications for. Yes. Okay. So you're asking us, do we have a date set for that? Not a specific date, but even a timeline. Are you looking at opening your first application round in the fall, in the winter? Are you looking at? Are you thinking about whether you'd like to present your first set of recommendations to the city? Council in the um, in the spring next year, 2019. That's that's what I'd like to um, think about. So let me pass out the um, my outreach 
Here, I'll just pass, let you pass that down. And we can fill in the blank. Um, and I also, the out this um, includes a, um, I think it's one page front and back. It includes a um, mention of a handout to give to boards and committees who you talk with, and that's another thing I'd like to talk about after we, after I finish getting through this initial introduction. Um, the last thing to mention is um, communication resources. So developing a communication strategy, I'd like to see, you know, among the on, on your committee, what you see your capacity is for managing communications. Um, there are a, a range of tools that I've listed, and you may think of some other ways to reach out to people. Um, and I'd love to talk, walk through with you how what we can communicate about the planning process and how we can use these channels of communication. Um, so um, before we get to the communication, I'm going to back up to the um, having, I think I've got one more handout to give to you, having a um, handout that you can share with, that I can share with stakeholders and that you can share with stakeholders and community members as you have conversations about um, CPA. Um, and I've drafted I, I have a rough draft of a handout that we could maybe add a little bit more missing information onto um, that then I can provide to you that you can take on the road with you. Um, I have an example that we used in my community in Medford um, when our Community Preservation Committee was undertaking its outreach process. Let's see if I have, I had a copy of it. Yeah. So I've essentially adapted this. Um, and so the first thing that you see at the top of the page that you have says insert image here. And so my question is, do you have an image? Uh, on your website, I saw that you, on the Facebook page, you have an image, but it also still has a vote on, um, what is it, vote on question five. And so we had a similar thing in Medford, and we took the, we adapted the image so that we could use it for the committee's own logo. Um, and the city solic or the city clerk asked us to install the city seal into our logo. So at a minimum, we could put the city seal on um, on your material if um, if you chose. But um, if you wanted to provide me with artwork, I would be happy to put that in there. The other thing that I that I noticed I wasn't able to find is a website for the committee. Either, okay, I didn't find a website on the city's website, nor it's on the city's website, okay. Um, I can look again, or maybe you can email me a link to it. Um, do you have, or will you be putting together a website for, like a, a privately hosted website for your committee? That's our plan, yes. Okay, so when you have that, that would also be helpful to to include in any material that you put out. Um, so working forwards again, communication resources, um, you're using your Facebook page. Who is managing your Facebook page right now? My name is Eileen Pooler. She's for the city's uh, website. And, and we were thinking maybe that we might hire her to, to do our website eventually, but. Uh, right now, we, we haven't done that yet. That's okay. as far as we got. It's just the city's website. Oh, the Facebook. Oh, your Facebook, Facebook page? page? Is unofficial. We don't have a Facebook Yes, it's an unofficial. Yeah, yeah, that was the Yes on Five group. Yes. Mm. And I'm not sure which of them is the manager. I can certainly find out. Yeah. yeah. And if you can find out whether they, whether they have original um, graphics that can be adapted to be a permanent logo could be helpful if you if you choose to, or if you have any images that you'd want to include on um, on a handout. And 
um, so um, the, the tools that we're looking at are the city website. If your committee has a website, it would be helpful. Um, what we found is that, and it varies in every community, what we found is that we wanted to maintain our own um, CPC website privately hosted because we had more control over the content and how frequently it's updated. The city website, we put essential information but we don't have control over when things get posted to it and our public is very anxious to see everything as soon as <laughs> it's available. <laughs> um, and so you have your local newspapers. Um, perhaps you use a cable station um, to share information. Um, email networks, you know, Every community has a different set of networks, way, established way that people reach, um, <coughs> that people get information and share information with each other. Um, we have also used reverse 911, put information out through the water bills, and attended community events to share information and invite people to participate in the public process, and um, used um, flyers, posters to advertise events. So, you know, you can um, consider at each step of the process what are the most appropriate ways to, um, the a level of information to put out there and the best ways to share the information. Um, and what are the milestones that you want to advertise? But I think the most important first question is who is managing your communication process at this point? Do you have? Um, well, we had uh, at our last meeting, uh, Mike Falsetti and uh, Rosemary uh, had, and Libby had said that they would uh, oversee the website. Yeah. Do you have other um, linguistic groups besides Spanish speaking that you need to communicate with? It's actually really helpful that you have two languages. In our community, we only put it in English because we have like 30. <laughs> and so there's, we couldn't really favor one linguistic group over another, but that will be really helpful if you have the capacity to be able to um, translate and provide, make materials available. Yeah, because what we were, um, this is another website um, consideration, but what we were instructed was that in our community, we needed to um, provide as much information as possible on the city's website as opposed to our privately hosted website because the city had an access tool that enabled people to translate in different languages that could not be guaranteed to work on our privately hosted page. So um, I don't know whether, you know, Holyoke has that tool, but if you needed to, it would be, yeah, that, that's where it would be most efficient to, to keep that information. But if you are able to reach most of your non-English speakers through Spanish, then that's, that's helpful. Good. Um, any more questions about or thoughts about the communication process oh, what, yes uh, what is the cost of to your to your committee of having your own website or your own Facebook page or whatever they call it Facebook page no cost at all what, is there any is there any, any uh, having our own describe? website is, yeah. is you know it's just only the only the cost of um, hosting the website which is like a um, hundred dollars a year or something like that 
And we had actually a volunteer in the community step forward to offer to um, design our page for us. So the committee members gave her the content and she um, designed the page. Okay, so the, the operating cost for that is $100 a year, that's it? Yeah. Oh, okay, thanks. We're fortunate enough to find a volunteer. That would be great. It was perhaps, you know, Five thousand or ten thousand dollars worth of labor to design the website that she volunteered. So that was it was very generous. Yeah. Um, maybe or reach out to the students and there's you possible. know that we can reach out to that might, HCC yeah. that might be able to be interested enough and Good idea. yeah and it may and collaborating with us and volunteering. Yeah. Before we had the community volunteer design a website for us, we were using a blog website, which was free, and we were able to manage it ourselves. It wasn't as professional looking, but it, it was functional. So it, you may be able to use resources like that. What you want to ensure is that you don't have a person set it up and then nobody knows how to maintain it in the future. So you want to be sure that um, somebody either on the committee or down the road if you have a staff person is able to keep the website up to date. Um, I haven't used it personally. Yeah. yeah. I've heard, I, I've yeah. heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> Besides Facebook, is there any other like sources that, that they have used in other towns? Like, you know, nowadays they have all these Instagram, Twitter accounts, <laughs> just to once it starts going to be able to uh, um, create awareness and, and show and display images of all the different projects with pictures and... Um, I think that the the critical thing is to know how are people in your communicate in your community communicating today, and how can we reach those channels? Um, so, what are people comfortable with using, and send them there? Um, Mainly Facebook. Yeah, I want to say. Do you have? Count. Yeah. Do you have like Facebook groups that people are participating in? We have um, hello. What's the one that Josh and Lee? Hello, Holyoke. Yeah, so pushing your material yeah. out there, good that good is one. definitely a good mm -hmm. thing to do. Um, just one question for everybody. Didn't Cisco Systems, didn't, weren't they gonna design something for the city? The folks that funded the, uh, compu the computer center? Remember, the down here, did, they a came, question. when they came to town, they were gonna put in a citywide annunciation system. Annunciation they're going to set up over here at the intermodal centers. Yeah, they're going to put it at various locations, like you see a CPA meeting Tuesday at 5:30. Uh, the, the guy walking by on the street could see it. Mm. I mean, but they were going to put it up. They they proposed to do a smart connected city program here, but it never <clears throat> never happened. Yeah. Well, it was a buy. It, it wasn't free. Yeah, we had it. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, it was just several free. hundred okay. thousand dollars. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Right, right. They forgot to mention that. They did forget yeah. to mention that. <laughs> they they did forget to I have a question. Sure. Um, the stakeholders, yes. identification and meeting, is that something that you would do individually and then come back and report to us? I met with these three people. I had conversations with these. Here's what they said. Or in some cases, would it be like it? maybe some of the, I don't know if there's some that have more information than others, but it might be interesting for us to help participate or yes. to, I don't know if, if this is something that happens only, you know, Monday through Friday, eight to four, or if it's something that might, maybe we invite some of the larger stakeholders to, to present, or maybe there's enough information that they could 
That's a great question. So what I I was actually talking with one of the um, city staff people, work um, Alicia in the CDPG office earlier, and we were brainstorming about how we would um, be able to meet with stakeholders um, in you know another one or two days of my coming out here to meet with people. And we had the idea of putting together a focus group for each of the program areas and inviting anyone available who has an interest in that program area to come to that focus group. So about spend about 90 minutes on each program area um, over the course of one day. And this would take place during the daytime, so this isn't necessarily a intended to draw the public, but it's really intended to draw the people who are working in Holyoke on these issues, whether they're um, staff or nonprofit organizations and so forth, um, to have a conversation. So we're going to, she said that she'd be happy to help or um, put something together um, with the community partners. So in addition to that, I'd like to try to have phone conversations with people who I know I need, um, are going to have um, information that I need to gather from them. Um, but I would, as I mentioned earlier, I would especially um, invite you to reach out to other boards and committees around the city. Maybe you could ask to be on their agenda over the next two months um, in February and March. So, you know, whether um, perhaps you all would like to identify what um, what boards and committees you might be able to meet with and, and gather their input and let them know what CPA is and um, kind of what our overall timeline is. That would be in addition to um, some of the members here are part are, are part of committees. And, yeah. And should they go back and do that? Sure, their certainly. Own um, you know, go to their own committee and formally say, "Here's a report from the Community Preservation Committee. This is what they're doing. Um, they're in a planning process, and they'd like to get input and and invite them to um, formally invite them to put that on their agenda and collect input." input are we going to be obtaining from um, these different organizations that we're going to reach out to? Um, since you came in yes, after I everyone, mm -hmm. I, I had handed out a set of talking points. Um, let me see if I have another copy here. I may not have given this to you. So this provides instructions for what you okay. would, um, how what, what you would want to say. Okay. And some other groups who might be best for um, for your committee members to develop a relationship with might be um, Chamber of Commerce, Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, um, other organizations who you are in, you know, who you interact with in the community um, and whether they are organizations that will um, that have assets that are specifically related to the CPA, or they may be organizations representing constituencies who have an interest in how CPA is implemented. What we're looking to learn is what are concerns, needs, opportunities relating to the CPA program areas. So that's. Essentially, uh, there's a list of questions, but essentially that's what the questions come down to. Um, so the, um, you know, perhaps in our community when we undertook this process, we developed a, um, a spreadsheet where we entered who was going to be going to each of the committees and um, and then we could record when we had those meetings and then know whether somebody needed to follow up because a, a meeting didn't happen. So what I could do is put together a spreadsheet like that, share that with you, and put my name next to the people who I'm speaking with. Um, and then you 
um, you can fill in your names on the spreadsheet, perhaps discuss that at your next meeting, how you can contribute. Um, file sharing is a question of how, so uh, the process, I guess, would probably be best for me to send any information through Elaine, <coughs> and then Elaine can share it with the rest of the committee. Um, so at your next meeting, you can have an update on where we are with the stakeholder outreach process. How often is your committee meeting right now? We're hoping to meet every two weeks. Okay, yeah. That, that's what we found that we needed when we were in the planning process. After the planning process was completed, we were able to slow down to once a month. But um, the planning process really goes by quickly, and there's a lot to discuss. Um, the public engagement piece is something that I'd like to spend a little bit more time talking with you about what you see as eff effective tools for public engagement. I brought with me one copy, I should have maybe brought some for everyone, of a survey. I'll just pass this around and you can um, you can take a look <coughs> at it. A survey that, that we used in Medford for um, the Community Preservation Committee. I prepared a much longer survey for another community that I worked with in um, the town of Hanson. Whether or not a survey works and what kind of a survey works really depends on your public and what you feel is their um, capacity to, you know, their patience to sit down and fill out a long survey <coughs> versus their um, desire to be part of a process at all, you know, do they are they going to come to meetings? Are they are you going to meet them at events? Are they going to respond to um, online solicitation for input, or do you need to um, perhaps use a survey to to gather input from more people who haven't had a chance to participate? Um, so. Um, I'd love to get a sense of what you feel is going to be effective. Um, brainstorm with you a little bit. Okay, well, I, I think that um, there will be some people who will come who are really interested in CPA, mm -hmm. who would come to meetings and public forums and whatever we you know, put out there for them to attend to get more information. But I think that um, we would probably need a survey, too, because... Okay. A lot of people won't, or they're, they're probably not even aware. And, and um, I guess my question about that would be is, who do we send that, C the, uh, if we did do a survey, who mm -hmm. would we send it out to? Because um, is it just the people who are contributing to this, to the? Well, there are different ways that we could address the survey. So in sometimes we could have multiple surveys. Um, one survey would be, I, I feel as though our, so one survey could be addressed to stakeholders in particular, although I feel that we're trying to reach the stakeholders um, through through one on one conversation, so the um, a survey might not be necessary as an additional step. Um, but a survey to the public um, could be done entirely online, bilingually, um, could be done entirely on paper or a combination of both. Um, in our community, we chose to um, make it online and make paper copies available in specific advertised locations around the city. Um, the senior center, the library, city hall, places where people were likely to go who didn't have internet access at home. Um, and you know, we also took criticism because people felt that we should have sent a survey out with the tax bills so that everybody would get one. A problem there is that only the homeowners would get the survey and not the renters. So that could bias the survey in that direction. Well, that's what I was wondering about. Would it be the people who are contributing actual funds to this, or do we want to reach out to all the whole city in general? I mean, you ever thought about that? Yeah, we hadn't, yeah. I would think the whole city, and I would also be concerned about just sending it to taxpayers simply because only one person in the household is the taxpayer. And, you know, maybe you're signing the check, but, you know, 
her husband is the one who's actually interested in this and would fill out the survey, and you've thrown it away without looking at it. You know, you're sending it out to everybody, and you know, renters also obviously are paying taxes indirectly because they're paying rent. And cutting off people from contributing information. How, how would we get the information to? Well, That's one thing that may be worth talking about, or talking, it might be worth talking to Marcos Marrero about this, because back a million years ago, when the zone change for what's now Gary Road Hyundai was being talked about, there were, as everyone here knows, huge controversies about that property and what should happen with it, and economic development and planning was actually tasked with going out with a survey to ask people what their feelings about the property were, some 18 acres of what was then Greenfields. And rather to everybody's surprise, we got quite a robust response to the survey for what that's worth. Good. And you know, I was not really that involved with it. I just heard the reports as Marcos brought them in. But we were impressed with the degree of response is true that we probably got more from the English language in the way of these things that the higher the income level, the greater internet access you have. So it would be good to try to correct for that. But people do respond to them. It's That's why it's critical to have demographic questions so that you know who's responding and who's not responding so that you can try to represent the voices that aren't being heard as well as the ones that are. I think it's not only a matter of internet access, but I think it's also a expectation of being able to participate in the, in the public process. Um, that it, it, it's, it always happens that the people who are responsive and participating to surveys and public processes tend to be more affluent households higher education, more affluent, and they're not the only voices that we want to hear. So um, it takes some, I think it, 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 it takes some specific marketing. One of the things that we did in, excuse me, I thought I turned it off, but I'm going to put it away. <laughs> um, one of the things that we did was to um, go to some of our service providers in the community who volunteered to take the surveys and put, make them available in their offices. And in fact, um, one person who is providing homeowner education handed the surveys out to people in her classes so that she was able to get them handed back to us right away. So, you know, we probably go to like Appleton Corporation and to Ohio Housing Authority and give them the. Yeah, we had the, the right, that, that makes Housing sense. Authority collected surveys for us as well. Um, so at least we got some people um, in um, not the usual demographic to participate. Um, and even still, we have an understanding that the public doesn't have all the information that we have. So, you know, as I have heard it said, you can't crowdsource public policy decisions. It's really important that, you know, we're undertaking this planning process because we're really looking under all the rocks and understanding what's, what's happening. We want to value people's input, but um, they don't have all the information that we have. So what they say is not necessarily um, going to be translated into policy. We take everything into consideration and um, try to develop a plan that's reflective of everything that we've learned through the process. Great. Um, further questions? So, further th so we'll be doing yeah. both then we'll, we'll do the a survey the so I can make a survey available both in an online and a paper format, but I would rely on you to have it translated. And so I can try to make a survey that is not so detailed. This is almost a little bit too simple, the survey that we put out. We were responding to people who really wanted it to be simple, and I think we didn't ask as many questions as we would like to have. So um, find the right balance of complexity. And then leave it to you to determine 
how to distribute it. Um, what did you do uh, in the beginning? When, if you, when did you start receiving funds so that you could start doing things? Because okay. We, so funds, yes, we did the entire planning process pro bono. Um, so the we didn't. Um, right. We are no. I mean. We didn't spend any funds until. Uh, um, we absorbed the cost ourselves, and then once we had funding, we requested reimbursement from the city. So the committee members essentially paid out of pocket and then got reimbursed. Um, yeah. <laughs> we, I'm trying to think of, um, we did have a consultant, but so um, we were a year behind. Um, so we're one year ahead of you, um, I think, in passing CPA, but you're ahead of us in terms of getting this planning process started. Um, so we already had collected ta uh, the, surplus, the surcharge for a full year before we began and so we but we didn't get to appropriate the funds the first year well, I think that's what we're going to be doing too we won't be getting funds a full year's funds until sometime after April this year and we won't be implementing until at yeah. least the fall we won't be ready till the fall if, if then yeah so we're pretty we're going to be pretty On much on the same doing schedule the same. Yeah. yeah so yeah um when do we develop the application? Is that part of this plan development yes. process? Yes. Mm -hmm. So the application is going to be part of the second half. Um, so working backwards, all of these little seeds that I put out along the way of what we're going to talk about, now we can work back up to the timeline. Um, so the application, so we'll be putting together the um, application itself during the the timeline that I gave you was um, during the um, April to a April and May section of the plan that we'll be writing. But prior to that, I'd like to think. Of, I'd, I'd like you to think about um, when you see yourself being ready to advertise the first round of applications and. Um, how much time you'd like to give yourself in the process um, and then um, you know when you see yourself being able to make the first year's commitment so if, uh, say we um, we have a timeline and in the beginning I think we'll probably want to give ourselves as much time as we can not, I'm not to overdo it but enough time to be able to to take our time doing yeah. this, and then once we get used to it, I mean, er, and you know, we we've done it once or twice before. Um, we we can, uh, you know, we'll be able to, uh, you know, change our timeline mm -hmm. in, in, in doing projects. We'll be able to, rather than maybe once a year doing it, we may be able to do it twice a year, have two. So do we have to be uh, so specific in the beginning? Or? You don't have to be. There's no, there's no specific um, timeline that you have to take. Um, if you're a town, then you need to follow the town meeting schedule. But being a city, you can set your own schedule. A lot, it's recommended um, that you have a regular schedule. You can take applications off schedule. It's good if you're going to do that, that you specify that in your instructions, that that's an option to take applications off schedule. But if you generally take applications on schedule, then it helps you to um, look at a slate of applications um, all at once and consider how the whole slate um, meets your planning objectives. So um, our committee decided to do two lightning rounds the first year because we were a year behind in um, using our funds. And that might have been biting off more than we could chew, but we're going to go ahead with it. Um, so taking your time. Lightning, lightning what does that mean? Um, Just so we began collecting applications in December uh, and planned to make our first round of recommendations in May. Um, 
and then a second round ending in October. So, so they're overlapping. Round. <laughs> so lightning means you would we get are, lightning. <laughs> yeah, we have to work okay. really quickly, and All our right. applicants have to work really quickly. Okay. I like the idea yeah. that you're going to take your time. I, think I, I recommend I that, having one, <laughs> one at first. And then Do one at yeah. first, yeah. and yeah. yeah. Okay. I, I okay. sense that, that your time is running out for the CPC. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So we have a lot more to talk about. I'll be in contact with you. If you can share information, please, if you have feedback about anything that we've talked about, please send it to Elaine and, um, and to me, and yep. I'll do the same. They can contact you directly, right? Yes, you can yes. contact so me directly as well. That's Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you. you. Okay, right there. Yes. Okay, good. All right. Okay. Thank you. Well, thank you, everybody, and uh, for that, um, we'll uh, I guess we'll meet in two weeks before everybody. Two weeks, leaves. yeah. February sixth uh, and fourteen is twentieth. February twentieth at five thirty. Lily and, and Mike Tuesday. Our next meeting, February twentieth. Five thirty. So we're always going to have to meet in front of the city council. We don't want to do that every week. We're going to have, we're going to have to, yeah. We just did it tonight because, yeah. I th oh, that's right. We changed it to Monday. We yeah, we're going to do a Monday meeting. Andrew, Andrew, we're going to do a Monday meeting next time. It's, we're going to switch to Monday, so uh, two weeks. Two weeks from last night. Is that President's Day? President's Day. Yes. Monday? But it's Right. Okay. Well, it's going to be 5.30, so that's way Just send me a notice. Until <laughs> yeah. We'll have at least have an hour. We'll, we'll have to figure this out. I don't All right, know. Good night. Okay, good night, everybody. Thank you. Uh, it's uh, uh, two weeks from last night, so that would be the 19th? A Monday. A Monday, not a Tuesday.